Welcome back to part two of our beginner's guide to RimWorld. If you lost the seed or need it again, it's beginner's guide with two G's spelt wrong. Yes, but that's the seed. In today's video, we're going to be going over a bit more farming, how to tailor effectively working with stone and art, as well as smithing and trading, hunting, butchering. So buckle up, there's a lot to tackle here. To start out, we're going to get some cotton planted. Cotton and leather are likely to be your first materials for making clothing and basic armor, but cloth is going to be more abundant and we will be using it to make money as well. To plant cotton, you do the same as we did for the other crops. Now let's go ahead and plant ourselves a square of at least 125 tiles of the stuff. It takes a while to grow, so we'll want to be placing a decent amount. While that is going, we're going to build our first stone cutters table. You can find it in the production menu of the architect tab. After that, we're going to build a zone to haul the stone to outside. Let's place a dumping stockpile near the door. Now let's open the settings for this stockpile. Similar to how we set the fridge shelves in episode one, we are going to hit the clear button to remove everything. Then type stone chunks in the search bar and click the green checks box next to it. And that's it. Any stone chunks your pawns haul will be brought here. Let's get them started on that. Left click on the orders button in the architect tab and select hole. Now we can drag our mouse over any stone chunks we see outside. Let's try to find 30 of them or so. Our colonists will now gather up these stone chunks and bring them here. Next, make a new zone in the exact same fashion, but this time instead Instead of typing stone chunks in the search bar, we're going to type stone and then select the stone block types. Now we have two piles. The reason we leave the stone bricks outside is because they won't deteriorate in the weather, so we don't need to worry about using our precious indoor space to store them. Deterioration happens when items with health bars are left outdoors. We are done preparing the groundwork for our new stone brick production. Let's go back to that stone cutters bench we built and select it. Now we can click the bills menu and add a new bill, make any kind of stone block. Now. Pawns will turn all the stone chunks they get into bricks, but we can do this even better to be efficient. If we select the details menu, there's an option in the bottom that says ingredient radius. Let's turn this down until the circle from our stone cutters table is only big enough to include our stone chunks pile. Now pawns will only work with stone that is in the pile. This is great because it keeps pawns from walking across the map and you can do this for any other workstation as well, like the stove for example. Let's adjust the radius of the stove as well. In the exact same fashion, select the stove, go to the details menu, and reduce the ingredients radius until it includes only the fridge. And that's it. We now have a full stone production setup just like any advanced player would have. Great job. Chopping up stone and waiting for cotton to grow is going to take a while, so let's take some time to learn about making art in RimWorld. Art sculptures grant a huge beauty buff to a room. You can see a room's beauty using this dongle down here on the bottom right of the screen. You can turn it off by clicking again, but let's hover our mouse over our rooms to see how they look. Not so good. But I fear not, because we are going to make it look very great soon. Let's go back to the architect tab and select the production menu. Now, let's find the art bench and build one near the stone cutters bench. While we are at it, let's open up the furniture tab and give your pawns chairs to sit at while they work. They're going to be spending a lot of time here and they will be willing to do it longer if we let them sit. Select the stool. Now place one at the stone cutters bench and the art bench. Perfect. Once everything is built, we can select the art bench and go to bills. Let's make small sculptures and do five of them. Let's also open the menu. On the far right, we can see all the different resources our colonists will use to make our statues. There's a lot of options, but we only want one. Let's go ahead and disable everything except for wood. It's the best resource to practice with because it's easy to get more. Finally, let's go to the orders tab and select chop wood. Then let's go find some trees to cut down so we have plenty of wood to make art with. You're doing great, stay with me. Now that we have all this set up, we're going to play with the work tab a bit. It's on the bottom of the screen right there. Before, in episode 1, we hit the checkboxes for everyone, but right now, it's time to set manual priorities, so let's go ahead and do that. On the top left, there's a checkbox to switch between automatic and manual priorities. Let's go ahead and click it real quick. Wow, that's a lot of numbers. Don't worry, it's gonna be easy. White boxes around a colonist the skills means they're good at it. Gray means they're okay at it. Red means they're bad at it. Let's find the colonist that is the best at art by left clicking the word art on the tab right here. It's reorganized all our colonists so the best artist is at the top. Let's left click the number on their skill until it's at two. Now let's do the same for the next pawn. Whoever is best at crafting and smithing should have both skills set to two. If they're better at one of them, we will set it the same for both. That way they can get better over time. And finally, let's set the last pawn to research. Let's go back to our 
artists and set them to whole at 2 as well. And whoever is best at growing and plant cutting should be set to 2 as well. And finally, whoever is best at cooking should be set to 2. When you have more colonists, you can split these tasks further. Now we don't have anything selected to research yet, but that's fine. Let's open up the research tab at the bottom of the screen and find the smithing research. Now let's select it and hit that research button. Very exciting. There's a good chance the research will take a long time to finish, but we will do other stuff while we wait. For now, let's wait for the artist to make a sculpture and the stonecutter to get us a good pile of blocks. The stonecutter's been working hard and our artists finally finished their first sculpture. Let's take a look at it. Select the sculpture on the ground and hit the I button on the menu right here. This window shows you all the info you need to know about an item. What we want to see right now is the beauty stat. This number shows us how much beauty it adds to the space around it. That's a really high number. If yours is negative, select the item and deconstruct it and wait for the colonist to build another. You can select the art bench and queue more as well. For reference, we can select a different piece of furniture and check that one's beauty stat. It's probably way lower. Now let's select that beautiful art sculpture and click the install button right here. And now let's put it next to our table. As you can see, statues can have a big impact on the beauty of a room. Let's take some time and build a few more and place them in the room. If your stone cutter runs out of blocks while you are doing this, feel free to have the researcher haul some more in. What an impressive room you have. Having a nice room gives a good buffs to our colonists. You can check them by selecting a colonist and clicking needs. This window shows us all the things your pawn has felt, thoughts they have had, and they sure do like this room. By now our food is probably getting low and the crops are not quite ready yet. Or maybe they are because you play longer like me. Either way, time for a lesson so stay with me. We have a few options outside of farming. The first is using the harvest option in our orders tab and select any berry bushes we find around the map. Now for the section option, hunting. Let's select the wildlife tab on the bottom of the screen and see what types of animals are on the map. There are a few kinds here, but some are dangerous and will fight back. This number here in the middle shows the chance an animal will attack you if you hurt it. Let's find an animal type that won't do that. This one works great. Let's select a pawn that has a gun and draft them for some manual hunting fun. Later on, we can mark these animals to be hunted by selecting them and checking the hunt box on the window on the bottom. We would also need to prioritize hunting on the work tab, but for now, we don't have many colonists, so let's avoid giving them too many things to do or they won't get anything done. Let's get back to our draft to colonists and select them. Now we can right click around the map. The colonists will go anywhere we like them to. Let's have them navigate to our prey over here. This white ring around the colonist shows us their range. This is how far colonists can shoot. Let's get the animal at just about mid range since we know they won't try to hurt us and once we are close enough we can right click on our target. The colonists will open fire and continue shooting until the animal is down or out of range. If the animal runs away you can get close to it again and right click it to start shooting once more. More. Once the animal's down, we can right click it and select a melee it to death. Hey, you just hunted your first animal. Congrats. Before we celebrate, we need to prepare the base to butcher it. Let's go ahead and make a zone in our freezer. Now let's open up the settings tab and deselect everything except for animal corpses. Finally, at the top, let's disable rotten corpses because we don't want to eat rotten animals. Let's make another one outside a ways away from the base and set that to rotten and fresh, but we will also include human corpses this time as well. We will also change the priority to the lowest. There is nowhere else to dump this stuff, but they will put fresh animals here if we don't because the fridge has the same priority. Now that this is all done, let's go into the fridge and place a butcher spot. You can find it in the production tab of your architect menu. After you placed it, we can select bills, add new bill, butcher creature. Let's change it to do forever. That way we never have to look at it again. Let's right click the butcher spot with a colonist selected and select butcher creature. Now the colonist will go ahead and butcher it. Congrats, you have raw meat. Your pawns will turn this into more food. Just make sure one of your pawns has cooking set to two, preferably the best one. 